Yo, back at it again with the uh, the videos. So, I mean, this is it, the final stretch. So, um, yeah. All right. Anyways, I'm gonna be talking about multiple dose model today, and um, it this is chapter 13, the Medan book. Um, I actually looked over the chapter. It's really helpful if you guys have the time. You know, take a look at it. A lot of practice problems. Really explains it well. Um, all right, so what is multiple dose model? Well, it's just going to be IV bolus, IV bolus, uh, and we all know IV bolus follows uh, this equation where um, C is equal to CO times E to the negative KT. So just as a reminder, as a refresher, here's what the, uh, ignore this little red dot, this, here's what the graph looks like for an IV bolus shot. So it just starts, you know, the concentration shoots straight up, it goes down and uh, we're gonna assume a couple things that it's first order obviously you know IV bolus is a first order reaction for the first order uh, first order blanking whatever it's first order and then we're gonna assume that the multiple doses the doses the doses after the first one are all gonna be identical so it's not gonna be like you got one and then woo, all the way up here and like nah, it's gonna be you know pretty uniform so it's gonna be like that that's a multiple dose. It's going to be identical doses. Okay. Um, and the last thing that you want to know is that T is T. So, all right. So you're probably like, what the? What does that mean? So little T is going to be time, and that's variable, right? And I'll kind of explain it in the next um, a little later on. And big T is also called the uh, the dosing interval, and that's going to be constant. So yep so let me just show you what this means um so uh i have the equation here again and let me draw the the graph so this is what the graph looks like for um an ivy bullet shot right we got co's over here um and when we did this for the midterm we assumed that t could be anything right so if t was one hour right here c was wherever the c was one hour so uh, if T was here, it's three hours, C could be wherever this was, C3. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say. Basically, little t is variable, because little t is time. When we, when we uh, replace little t with big T, we make that a constant. So this is a constant, and that's called the dosing interval. So what is the dosing interval? The dosing interval is basically from CO, from this point, let me use a different, uh, sorry, from um, this starting point, to this ending point that's how much time elapses so you got boom boom that's the dosing interval that's going to be constant right you can't really change this interval so that's really important to understand that i could even rewrite it actually so we got c is equal to c o e to the negative k and we're going to use big t which is the dosing interval so then what does this c become then and what does this c become well this c would have to be your minimum C, so C min, and your original C would become C max. So if I were to rewrite the equation again, you could have, um, sorry, I'll just rewrite it here. You'll have C min is equal to C maximum times E to the negative KT. And this is really important. Uh, if you guys want to take anything away from this video, this is one of the things to take away that you got this equation. And this really comes into effect when we have multiple doses. So, for example, um, I didn't really get into it yet, but for example, if we were to give another dose, it would jump up and go here. That's another dose. One more time, it would jump up and go here. So now, this one, what point is that? This point is gonna be your C max at your second dose, right? Because this was dose number one. Dose number one was, um, right here this is dose number one this is dose number two this is dose number three so you got your c max at dose two so then what's this point well we know that c minimum is equal to c maximum times to the negative k t we know k is a constant because you know first order uh t is a constant because that's dosing interval right dosing interval that's another t you got your first t here you got second t so c max basically c max two times e to the negative k big t is equal to c min 2 
and uh, we can repeat that again this would be C max 3 so you got your C max 3 times e to the negative k big T is equal to C oh sorry about that um, is pretty much equal to your um, sorry C minimum 3 um, and that's really the big the big thing you know um, basically when we give an n number of doses so if I just were to keep going if I were to just keep going uh, with the doses so you got boom boom and keep going up sorry I'm like getting in the way but I'm just trying to you know uh, we get um, C max at your uh, nth at your nth dose times e to the negative kt is you gonna you're gonna get c min right b max but the question is how do you find all these you know it's not that easy so let me get into the next topic it's gonna be right here accumulation factor um, accumulation factor is I wrote here the most important concept of multiple dosing is shortcut to find any c max any c min and more like I'm selling a product, you know? So, what do I mean? So basically, if I were to draw the graph again, you know, sorry about all these graphs, you get this, you get that, you get that, you get that. We already said this is C max one, this is C max two, C max three, C max four, to eventually C max n, right? So all you need to do is you get your CO or your C max one and you multiply your C max one by this S at whatever dose, right? And you get your C max at whatever dose. So now the problem is finding this SN. So S is actually defined, SN is actually defined by this equation. Um, let me just get a little more space. SN is defined by this equation and you definitely need to remember this. So SN is equal to one minus E to the negative N K T. Notice big T too, so those are equal. One minus E to the negative K T, and that's S N. So you're like, okay, this is a big equation. So how am I going to remember all this? Well, or how am I going to apply this? Most of the time, you're going to be given half life. If you're given half life, you can find T. If you do that, yeah, sorry, you can find K. Most of the time, you're going to be given your dosing interval, right? Shab uh, usually gave the class the dosing interval in class. So, and then n is just at whatever dose. So right here, you define it. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, and this is n. So at whatever dose it is, it could be your seventh dose. You plug in seven for n, and you'll find your accumulation factor at seven. Once you find your accumulation factor at seven, you multiply your first C max with seven, and you get your C max at your seventh dose, right? So let's um, try to apply this. Okay, so this is a super easy problem from the, uh, the textbook, and you know it says the half-life of a drug is six hours, and identical doses are see identical doses ooh, are administered every six hours. Calculate the oh, calculate yeah all right okay, let's calculate the accumulation factor after three doses after twenty doses calculate the C max at three. I'm probably just going to do the first two, um, and maybe one of these. Um, so okay, so let's get into it. So we know that. Uh, half-life right we always write down what we have so half-life is equal to six hours you know identical doses whatever that's multi-dose um, administer every six hours so this is what I mean every six hours is the dosing interval never gonna change never gonna change um, and you want to find the accumulation factor so what is s right and we know that after three doses it just means that n so basically s by the way sorry s is this just to rewrite it out, right? Just to rewrite it out. We have, this is S, okay. So now we uh, know that N is gonna be, let's do the first one, N is three, right? So now we ha we pretty much have everything. We have N, we have K, K is, um, just a reminder, LN2 over uh, half-life is equal to K, and we have half-life, so all we need to do is just do LN2 over six, is equal to k we have dosing interval is six uh we have n is equal to three so we plug everything in 
you get s is equal to. Um, so once we have k, we can find, you know, s. So s is, let me just pause it and try to find, figure it out. All right, so I get s to be about one, and I kind of wrote everything out. So I get s to be about 1.7. Um, so if s is 1.7, let's go to the calculate the C max at three doses, right? I, I kind of know I didn't give you the, the CO, but let's say the CO um, is, let's say, I don't know, like two milligrams per liter. What would be the C max at three doses? So all you do is you multiply. We know CO is C max one, so we multiply that by S, by the accumulation factor, and we'll get the C max at three. So that's pretty much it. Um, now, if we go to 20 doses, we'll notice something cool. So let me just make some more room. Um, actually, I'll erase a little bit. Okay, so for S at 20 doses, so let's do this. S at 20 doses, right? We plug everything in and we get this. We get 20, you know, the same ln2 over 6 times 6. 1 minus e to the negative uh, ln 2 over 6 times 6. Something cool happens because we actually end up getting um, the 2 as the accumulation factor. And you would think, wait a second, you jump from 3 to 20, and all that happened was the accumulation factor went from 1.75 to 2. Shouldn't jump be higher? Well, try something here. Try s is equal to... Um, try finding s when n is... 18 or even 17 16 you'll pretty much get like 1.9 really close number to 2 so that basically means when um, when n is really big right when n is really big this e becomes zero and you know this is a concept that's uh, you know just like repeated over and over again when e is when, you know, when the exponent's really big e becomes zero so we can say that S at steady state right, is equal to 1 minus 0 because E is really big. You get the, it's become 0 over E to the negative KT. You pretty much get 1 over this. And steady state just means that we know um, in terms of the concentration in the body. Um, actually, I, I have a drawn up right here. This is it. So you um, give a couple doses and it goes up, goes up, goes up, but it's gonna level out. And about here, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly here. It really depends on the actual problem, the actual situation. Around here, it levels off. The concentration is gonna go higher. It's not gonna keep going up, you know. It doesn't happen like that. It's gonna level off. So it's gonna climb up and then gradually level off. And this is really what is referred to as CSS. So basically at this, as, at a certain point, right, your C max at nth dose is gonna be the same for any n at a certain point. And this is really uh, the factor that you need. So basically it's the same thing. So you'll get your C max at one times um, your accumulation factor at steady state is equal to C max n. And you'll find out that at whatever um, and if it's big enough, if your n is big enough at whatever n, you're going to get the same C max n. And we'll see right here. Um, you can try yourself. You plug it in at 20, you get 2. At 18, you'll get 1.99. At 17, you'll get 1.99. At 16, you'll get 1.99. So after enough doses, your C max is not going to change your C max at n dose, because n is so big, it's always gonna give you two, you know? It's always gonna give you that two. It's always gonna give you two milligrams per liter. Always gonna give you two milligrams per liter, because that's, that just, it's capped out in the body, you know? The body's like, no more drug, no more drug, so that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks.